the carving in the altar on our first floor. The sanctuary on the first floor has a beautiful carving of Jesus overlooking the city of Jerusalem. This companion carving shows Jesus overlooking the city of Chicago, yes. <laughs> and the perspective is fairly correct. In other words, if we could look out and see Chicago from these windows, and if, if, if it were 1952, these are the buildings we would see. And remember, even in the 50s, this building was pretty tall compared to the rest of the buildings in Chicago. Today, if you go out there, you can't see anything. Every single building around us is taller than we are, so you can't see much. But these buildings still exist, and you may know some of them. Perhaps you visited them here uh, while you have been in Chicago. We have the Wrigley Building here. We have the Tribune Tower, the Intercontinental Hotel, the old Palmolive Building. This is the old Jewelers Building, 35 East Wacker. Um, all these buildings still stand. This, by the way, is a beautiful building if you ever want to go in. It's quite magnificent. The other thing to notice about this window, and we'll notice in the windows uh, a couple of unusual things too. I say unusual, they're not unusual, but there are some things in the carving and in the windows that you might not expect to see in religious windows or art. There's an airplane. Do you see the airplane up here? There's an airplane. And if you could, and you're welcome to come close to the, to the altar. There's no reason you can't come right up here. But there are some railroad freight cars down here on the old Chicago and Northwestern Railroad tracks just north of us, north of the Chicago River. Uh, and, uh, and other very, very, uh, you know, it's a very realistic carving. It's supposed to show you what Chicago looked like in those years, and it, it does indeed do that. But you might wonder, you know, uh, why all the non-religious symbolism in some of these some of these pieces of art here in the sanctuary in the chapel. I'm not sure I can answer that question. But the carving here was considered a companion carving to the one that's in the sanctuary downstairs. Downstairs, Jesus is looking over Jerusalem. Here, Jesus is looking over Chicago. And it makes sense. Chicago is our home, and Jesus is looking over Chicago. Okay, so our carving. May I say something about the windows very quickly? There are 16 windows, and they are in sets of four. Um, just very quickly, the first four windows, beginning with the window just to your right, right there, is these first four windows are what we would call Old Testament windows, um, windows that are dedicated to stories out of the Hebrew Bible, the Hebrew scriptures. So you have the creation of Adam, you have Moses and the burning bush here. This window is to remind us of David and the Psalms. I don't know uh, if you're familiar with the Psalms of the Old Testament, but many Psalms are supposedly written by, were supposedly written by David, who began life really as a shepherd boy, which you see at the top of the window, and then of course ended his life as the king of Israel. Uh, <clears throat> and the, the lyre, or harp, the musical instrument, reminds us that David, as a youth, played the lyre, particularly for King Saul. Then we have <laughs> the RX symbol, and yes, yes, you're right. That's the prescription symbol. If you go to the doctor and the doctor prescribes some medicine for you, it may say RX on it, and then the name of the prescription, the name of the drug that the doctor is prescribing. Well, that's exactly what that is. It's to remind us that the Walgreens were in the drugstore business. <laughs> so this is, this is that symbol to remind us that this chapel was was a, a gift of the Walgreen family. Well, Mrs. Walgreen especially. I think it might make sense that it's in this window. I don't know why it's in this window, but it might make sense because when David was a young youngster and King Saul was troubled or disturbed, David would play music for him and would calm Saul down, you know, pro provide some calming music for King Saul. So there is a healing element to this window. 
and maybe that's why the prescription symbol is there. I don't know. It's just my guess. Uh, and then we have a window of, devoted to the Old Testament prophets, Isaiah, Elijah, etc. Four New Testament windows. So these are the Christian story, the birth of Jesus, um, a window to remind us that Jesus washed the feet of the disciples. Of course, a crucifixion and a resurrection window. And then we have four windows devoted to early Christian history, if you might call it that. This first window is to remind us of folks we used to call the church fathers. Sorry, I don't mean to be sexist, but that's generally how they were referred to historically. Folks who were very instrumental in the earliest years of Christian history. And one name comes to mind, August, Augustine, I think is how it should be pronounced, who wrote uh, The City of God, a very famous religious work from the um, fifth century uh, of our era. So that's to remind us of church fathers. This window is to remind us of the Protestant Reformation. I don't know if you're familiar with Reformation history. Um, this is a symbol that Martin Luther either created or simply liked very much. A cross embedded in a heart surrounded by rose petals. Um, it's synonymous now with the Protestant Reformation that uh, really dates from Martin Luther's reforming work in the early 1500s. Methodism is not a, is not really in the Lutheran tradition, but Methodism is very much a Protestant church. We are very much a creature of the Reformation, and so that window is here. Let's skip this window, but let's talk about the two globes. Remember we saw two globes downstairs? This is our John Wesley window. John Wesley's image isn't in it, but this is to remind us of John Wesley. Wesley made a very famous statement in his lifetime. He said, I look upon the whole world as my parish. Wesley was a an ordained pastor in the Church of England. He could have served, served an individual church. In other words, he could have preached every Sunday at this church. He could have married people, buried people, baptized people, but he didn't want to do that. He thought he needed to go where people were not hearing the gospel very well. So he went to coal mines, for instance, and preached to coal miners. And he went to prisons and he preached to prisoners. He went places where he thought people were not hearing the gospel story. So he made the statement, you know, the whole world is my parish. I'm going where I'm needed. I'm going where I'm needed. And that's to remind us of John Wesley's uh, concept of ministry. We have four windows dedicated to uh, North American Christianity, maybe. I guess that might be the best way to describe it. This first window is supposed to remind us of the Mayflower Pilgrims. I don't know how familiar you are with um, U.S. United States history, but the Pilgrims um, came to what would become the state of Massachusetts. They arrived in the year 1620. They were very influential in how Christianity developed in the United States. It's a bit unusual that they are here in the Sky Chapel because Methodists are not pilgrims. We are not descended from any of the pilgrims necessarily. But the pilgrims played a very important part in Christianity in the United States. So we've got a window dedicated to the pilgrims. The man on horseback in this window is Francis Asbury. You don't need to remember the name. But he was the first bishop of the Methodist Church here in the United States. Very, very instrumental in how Christ uh, Methodism developed in the United States. And then we have two windows devoted to our church here in Chicago. So remember I said we were organized in the year 1831. We were organized in a log cabin, and there you see it. Now, is that what it looked like? I don't know. But we were organized in a log cabin, not here, a bit north and west of where we are right now. Um, and you'll see there's a symbol here, the seal of the city of Chicago and the seal of the state of Illinois. Well, why are those things in our church window? Well, honestly, I don't know. I, don't, I wish the person who designed the windows were here and we could ask her or him, you know, what did you have in mind? <laughs> the, the seal of the city of Chicago is in this window. I don't know, except to say that Wesley, John Wesley, felt very 
strongly that Methodists should be out in their communities doing work. Wesley went out. He went to these coal mines and prisons and other places. He thought every Methodist should go out, <clears throat> go out into the community, pardon me, and, and do good work, do uh, good work, spread the gospel, uh, be active. So our church is located in Chicago in the state of Illinois. That's our community. That's where we do our work. So maybe that's why those symbols are here. 